In this video we look at the work on numerical solution of equations for the FP3 module. The specification says that we should be able to find approximate solution of equations using either graphs or the intermediate value theorem. We should know the condition for convergence of an iterative sequence and we should be able to use the newton raphson method. So our key facts, well first of all if we have a continuous function and we know that f of alpha is less than zero and f of beta is bigger than zero then that tells us that the equation f of x equals naught has a root somewhere between alpha and beta and that is sometimes called the intermediate value theorem. If we know that alpha is a root of the equation x equals g of x then the iteration xn plus 1 equals g of xn will converge to alpha provided we know that the absolute value of g dash alpha is smaller than 1 and that the initial value of the iteration is reasonably close to alpha. The newton raphson method for finding roots of f of x equals naught simply says that if alpha is an approximate root of the equation f of x equals naught then beta which is given by alpha minus alpha, f of alpha divided by f dash alpha usually gives a much better approximate root. This leads to an iteration formula xn plus 1 equals xn minus f of xn divided by f dash xn and this iteration with a decent with a reasonable starting value usually gives very rapid convergence to the desired root. We will see all of these key facts in use when we look at this example that comes from the 2011 paper. So first of all we have the, to show that the equation x sine x minus 0.5 equals 0 has a root between 0.6 and 0.8. So if I let g of x equal x sine x minus 0.5, the only reason I'm using g rather than f is that you'll notice later on in the question there is a function f coming up which is different from this function so it's simply to avoid a confusion later on. So letting g of x equals x sine x minus 0.5 then we've got g of 0.6 must be minus 0.16 and g of 0.8 is 0.07. So those values simply come from the calculator. Remember of course that we're using radians. Well we have a sign change. We've got g of 0.6 is negative, g of 0.8 is positive. This is a continuous function. There's no sudden jumps in that function. So we've got a sign change in a continuous function, so there must be a root between 0.6 and 0.8. So we've now got to set up the newton raphson method for the question. So we've got g of x is x sine x minus 0.5. So to differentiate that, we'll need to use the product rule on x sine x. Differentiate the x, we've got 1, leave the sine x alone, so that's 1 times sine x, plus, leave the x left alone, times the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. So we've got sine 1 times sine x, plus x times cos x, as the derivative of g. The newton raphson iteration is xn plus 1 equals xn minus g of xn over g dash xn. So that becomes xn minus xn sine xn minus 0 0.5 
over sine of xn plus xn cos xn. Now to get the required answer we need to write all of this as a single fraction. The single fraction will have a common denominator of sine xn plus xn cos xn. To move to the common denominator we've had to multiply this by the common denominator. So the xn becomes xn sine xn plus xn cos xn all over sine xn plus xn cos xn and we haven't had to do anything at all to this term. If we multiply the brackets out we'll notice that the xn sine xn there cancels with the xn sine xn there so all I'm left with is that term and that term. So we've got xn squared cos xn plus 0.5 over sine xn plus xn cos xn which is the required formula. Starting with x0 equals 0.7 using our calculator we can obtain x1 is 0.741596. Now we're aiming to get the value of alpha correct to five decimal places so it's certainly worth putting your answers to one, at least one, and probably two extra decimal places and wait for the values in the iteration to settle to one or two more decimal places. X2 0.7408411 X3 0.7408409 and X4 is 0.7408409 so it certainly looks as if the required value is 0 0.74084. Moving to the final part of the question, we're told that the original equation can be rewritten as um, xm, we've got the iteration xn plus 1 equals f of xn, where f of x is sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.5 over x. So we're first of all asked to find an expression for f dash x and then decide whether or not this, the, this iteration can be used to find the value of alpha. To differentiate f of x we need to use the chain rule. So the derivative of 0.5 over x is minus 0.5 over x squared. The derivative of sine to the minus 1 of something is 1 over the square root of 1 minus the something squared. So we have there the result of using the chain rule to differentiate f of x. If we want to know whether the iteration will converge or not, we need to consider the value of f dash alpha. We know that alpha is 0.74084. And if we evaluate f dash alpha, we obtain minus 1.23. The absolute value of this is bigger than 1, so the iteration will not converge to alpha. The marking on this question, we need for the first part of the question to look at the value of f of 0 point, sorry, g of 0 0.6 and g of 0 0.8 and see that there is a sign change and then we must clearly state that because of the sign change there's therefore a root of the equation between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. For the part b we need first of all to differentiate g of x for a method mark and then make use of the formula xn plus 1 equals xn minus g of xn over g dash xn. So that gives us the first two marks. Then we need to do the subsequent simplification to get the third mark. For the second part of part b 
There are two marks for using the iteration with the starting value of 0.7 and obtaining subsequent values to a suitable level of accuracy and then an answer mark for obtaining the value of alpha correctly to five decimal places. And for part C, we have two marks for finding the derivative of f, then two marks for explaining why that tells us that the iteration will not converge to alpha.